According to the marketing, the M1 Finance app is like the best application out there right now because you can do literally everything from one platform and it's perfect. But according to the logic, it's not that great and it's kind of subpar and it's kind of decent. And I don't want to say everything sucks, but I do want to say this. Not everything is that great either. And I want to clarify what's good and what's bad. And by the end of this video, guys, I'm actually going to talk about every single detail from pros to cons to actually calling customer service and asking them the hard questions. Like, for example, why do you say there are no fees, but you actually do have a hidden fees with the SEC, but you don't tell your customers about it, do you? And I just want to clarify all those questions and actually ask them about it because a lot of people don't actually know about this stuff. On top of that, guys, I do want to say this. My name is Tyler Bryson. I'm an accountant and I've been pricing in personal finance for the past four years now. And on top of that, here's the number one thing about this video that you never heard before. I'm not making any money. I'm not an affiliate. They're not paying me whatsoever. And if you see any other YouTube video talking about this entire app, they usually have a referral link down below. That's not me. I'm not making any money. I have no reason why I should recommend the app. No reason why I should recommend the app. I'm just going off if it's good, if it's great, if it makes sense for you, if it has value for you. If it doesn't, I don't recommend it. If it does, I do recommend it. So let's get right into the video. But before you do that, guys, I do want to say this. I do upload videos every single day on the channel. Yes, I said every day about making money, increasing your income, and a whole bunch of things that are important to you that they probably didn't teach you in school. So make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video and you're the first to actually watch it. On top of that, we do have a little tradition on the channel where I actually ask you a question before the video starts. You answer, and then after the video, you respond to it with your new perspective if you have any. So here's the first question. Is this the first time you're hearing about the M1 Finance application? Is it the first time you're hearing about the platform? Me personally, I heard about it from Instagram and in the comments down below when you guys actually recommended this video. I think it was Zeke. Zeke recommended this video. So let me in the comments down below if you heard about it today or you heard about it before or if you're a member. Very curious to find out which one of the viewers are actually members and which ones are not. So now that you commented, I actually do want to get into the video ASAP. But before we do that, I do want to clarify a few things about the M1 Finance app and just go over some of the features so you can understand the question I'm going to be asking later on in the customer service video. So let's go over them right now. Now, the first thing is this. How does the M1 Finance actually work? And here it is. Basically, the way it works is like this. It lets you invest, borrow money, and even use a check-ins account with a high yield. Now, I do want to clarify something whenever I hear anything about I do everything this entire app I think about problem I don't like it at all I think about like what happens if this happens and you're kind of screwed here's my thing usually when a company makes a product like this they have a whole bunch of products that contradict each other here's why I'm saying this because for example if you're long-term investing with this entire product and trying to automate everything you shouldn't have something to borrow money against your actual securities, like your stocks and whatever you're investing into. Because usually when that happens and you're trading, you're actively trading, that's not really long term. So that's not really recommended. On top of that, if you're offering a high yield account, you don't want to offer such high yields because then the person won't really invest that much and they'll just keep their money in the savings account. So you want to maintain it low. And then you also want to make sure that your investments aren't really long term all the way by offering other products. And on top of that, you want to make sure that you're rates for the borrowing are low so people are actually incentivized to actually borrow against it so there's a whole bunch of contradictions here and that's why i'm always worried about products like this and i want to make sure this is actually a good one versus a bad one so i'm going to go over all those details later on so stick around for that the second thing i actually want to go over is the marketing now the marketing sounds incredible like i said in the beginning of the video right it sounds perfect on paper it's glorious but when you actually start breaking things down you have to understand something they make it look as if they're competing with the big banks, the big companies like E-Trade and all this stuff. But in reality, you're not competing with those people. You're not competing with the big banks. They're old. They're obsolete. I get, well, not obsolete. They have like the best rates when it comes to mortgages. But what I'm saying is this. You're not competing with them. You're competing with the new online banks like Vero, SoFi, like um, Chim, like all these new applications like online. You're competing with them. And compared to them, you're subpar. Here's why. Your APY and the check-ins or savings, whatever you want to call it, is only 1.5%. And on top of that, you do have a maintenance fee on it. And I don't know yet if you can actually waive it or not, but I do know this. If you go with Chase, there's a maintenance fee of $144 every single year if you do the math. But if you have direct deposit, they waive it. I don't know if with you guys, you only charge 100 bucks a year, but I don't know if it's, hey, if you can actually waive it with a direct deposit. But I do know this, with Vero and SoFi, there is no fees whatsoever attached to it. And you also earn 2.25% versus your 1.5%. It doesn't look that good now, right? But when you compare it to the entire banking system and the big banking system, it looks so great. But you're not competing against them. You're competing against the online banking system. Because if you compete against them, you would have mortgages. You would have all the securities. But you don't yet because you're not big enough yet. But you might be. 
but not but not yet. Now the third thing is this pies, portfolios, and all this stuff you can actually build within the app and it's integrated. I'm a big fan of that, okay? That got me really excited. When I heard about having a portfolio that holds a whole bunch of portfolios together and invests everything automatically, I got very, very excited. It sounds incredible, sounds amazing. So I have nothing to say about that, okay? Until I actually try everything out later on in the video, but it looks very great. Basically how it works is this. Imagine if you make a portfolio and you have like a master portfolio where all those little portfolios actually lies, you can actually do that and automate everything, which is incredible and it's amazing. So I have nothing to say about that. Remember guys, I did say this, some of the products are good, some of the products are bad. So I just wanna clarify that. I'm not fully on board, but I'm not fully off board either. I really like that. You guys did a great job with that, good job. Now, the fourth thing I wanna talk about is automation. The whole theme of the marketing is automation. Me personally, I don't like to automate my finances because, hey, you're talking about my money. I want to have more control. But in this case, you're automating it. But before you automate it, you're picking where you want that money to go. So that's great. When it comes to comparing it to Acorn, this place has more options. Well, not this place. M1 Finance has more options than Acorn. So I do like that. I do appreciate that. Being able to automate everything and have the capability to buy fractional shares, that's incredible. That's amazing. I really appreciate that. And I have nothing to say about that either. That's great. So, so far guys, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of M1 so far? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Basically, to summarize everything, the APY is not that great, the fees are not that great, the marketing is not that great because they're comparing themselves to the wrong people, but everything else when it comes to investing is pretty good. I really like it, and I think it's amazing. So, let me know in the comments down below, what do you personally think so far? And that's when you do that, let's call customer service ASAP and actually find out what's going on with the company. So let's call customer service right now and it's supposed to be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and right now it is 4.23. So let's call them right now and see how long it actually takes them to get on the line. Good afternoon, I'm on Finance, this is Danny. Hey Danny, um, my name is Tommy. I'm just calling in actually a few questions about M1 Finance, see if it's a good fit for me, if that's cool with you. Yeah, for sure, how can I help? Awesome, Um, Danny, can you, is, by the way, is your name Danny? That's how you pronounce it? Uh, Danny, yes. Oh, Danny. All right, perfect, Danny. Sorry about that. No worries. Awesome. So I'm just calling in about, like, how does how does the entire, like, um, the entire M1 Finance card work, the investing part, and also the borrowing portion? For sure. Um, so I guess the, the borrowing portion is a little bit easier to explain um, because... I can't hear you, Danny. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello. Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I guess the borrowing portion is a little bit easier to explain uh, because you do need to have $10,000 worth of equity within your portfolio okay. to be able to borrow. Um, once you do have that $10,000, you can borrow up to 35% of your portfolio okay. at a rate of 4.25%. Uh, 4.25%. Yep, and at that time, you'll be billed uh, monthly, just the interest, and then you can pay down the principal as you want. And it's 4.25% um, annually, right? That is correct, yes. Okay, so I understand that yep. portion. And when it comes to the investment portion, is it free? Is it is it all automated? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so um, what you'll do in the onboarding stage, just set up um, whatever account you're looking for, if that's, that's yeah. uh, individual taxable or so on. Um, you'll set up your pie, which will be your portfolio. Um, you can have up to 100 securities within that portfolio, okay. and then um, we do have an auto invest feature too. So once okay. you make your initial deposit, you'll be able to set up all the weights for um, the different pies and slices within your portfolio, and then yeah. we will invest that money, the, the initial money into that portfolio. And okay. going forward, you can leave auto invest on if you'd like. That way, once your cash balance reaches $10 or more, all, all those funds will be deposited into your portfolio, or you can have cash, uh, the auto invest off, which the cash will just sit in your cash balance and you'll have to make individual buy orders. Okay, so what it sounds um, like is that you can automate it in a way that you can have your money automatically go into that investment portfolio that you created yourself. And when it comes to the correct. options, when it comes to the stocks and the stuff that you guys have available, do you guys have like literally like all the stocks in the stock market available? Or do you have, um, do you guys have um, like a, like maybe not, not all of them? Yeah, so we don't have uh, options or mutual funds, um, but we do have most stocks on NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, as well as um, a numerous amount of ETFs. So I'd say it's more of a long-term investing platform rather than like a day trading platform. Okay, so uh, talking about day trading, is it possible to do day trading on the platform or is it just like long-term? Uh, it's more so for long-term. So basically you can make, we have one trading window a day, um, which begins at 9 a.m. Central Time. So you have to submit all your orders before 9 a.m. and then they will process them then. Um, 
Now with M1 Plus, which is our little subscription package, yeah. um, you will have the option to a second trading window, which will be in the afternoon. Okay, when you say trading window, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so that is how we're able to do partial shares. So basically, um, we will aggregate all orders within the platform, um, and then we will submit basically one bulk order for all the yeah. securities, and then we will divide it up into partial shares. Okay. So you don't get to necessarily lock in a price uh, okay. that you're looking for. So it won't be the opening bell price. Um, it's going to be whatever, whenever we can execute the bulk order, that's what the price you're going to get. And it will basically be the same for all users. Okay. So it sounds like prior to the uh, to the um to the entire um transaction being open or anything like that, you have to like prior to that you have to set it up so then when the opening does happen like at nine a.m. you guys can execute everything. That is correct. Yes. Yeah, so if you submit an order a buy order at eight thirty for um, one hundred dollars with Amazon, mm -hmm. we'll take that order at nine a.m. and then we'll aggregate all the orders together. Yeah. Whatever the price is at that time, maybe it's nine forty five, maybe it's ten a.m. Um, we'll submit the order, then we'll. Uh, disperse the partial shares accordingly yeah. and then it'll reflect into your account. So it doesn't sound like, for example, if right now Amazon is falling by like maybe like 50% and I want to, I want to, um, I want to cash in on that and I want to buy it at that discount price. There's, it's not possible to actually do that because I do have to wait until the next day open a window, right? That is correct. The next business day trading window. Okay. So on average, does it only take one day for a trade to execute or can it take multiple days for an actual trade to execute? Since you guys are doing partial shares. Right, so it'll only take one day unless you submitted it over the weekend or something like that. But one business day, um, if you were submitted, let's say, you know, right now, 3.28 p.m. Central Time, the next trading window will be 9 a.m. Central Time tomorrow, and that's when your order will be fulfilled. Okay, and it sounds as if if you use the um, the N1 Plus platform and you subscribe to that premium factor, you actually get two trading windows. So on top of that 9 a.m. one, you can actually do it um, in the afternoon also, you said? Yes. Now that platform has not dropped yet. Um, okay. We're still waiting for a launch date, um, but it's it's starting to roll out. It should be here within you know the next one to two months or so. Okay. Awesome. And how much does that M1 Plus um um cost? Yeah. So um, right now it's at a hundred dollars, um, but going forward it'll be one twenty five. So we're kind of um, we're doing a pre enrollment discount. Right okay, now. so it's a hundred dollars, and then it's one twenty five. And a question, Danny. For example, if I sign up right now, would I be locked into that one hundred dollar initial price, or will eventually will it change, and I would also be, I would also have to start paying that twenty five dollars extra. Um, once you get to, so I guess in one year's time, you would have to. It would go up to one twenty five. Okay, awesome. I understand. And also, for example, if I just wanted to open up like a like a M one check-ins accounts and have the debit card with you guys. By the way, do you guys have a credit card also? Is that correct or no? Um, not, not at this time. It's only going to be the debit card. Okay, so right now it's just a debit card. So if I wanted to get the entire, like, just the debit card and the check-ins accounts, can I do that entire M1 um, Plus thing still just with that one product? You can, yeah. So then with uh, M1 Plus, you would also get 1% cash back on that debit card. Okay. And so then within the checking account, you have a 1.5. Okay. Um, so for example, I did see like online, you guys do have an entire like um, page that's dedicated to this. You guys say, well, you know, our rates, we get you 1% cash back. On top of that, we get you 1.5%, which is like 17, high, like 17 times higher than Chase, Wells Fargo, and all those like big banks, for example. And I did notice this, right? When you go to Chase, you have to pay like twelve dollars a month, which is one hundred forty-four dollars a year. But with you guys, it's only a hundred bucks. But mm -hmm. is there a way to get that entire fee waived? Is for example, because I have noticed, like with big banks, if you have a direct deposit set up and it's over like eight hundred bucks or five hundred bucks a month, they usually waive that monthly fee. So can I do that same thing, like um, if I set up like my entire employment with you guys, my entire direct deposit? At this time, that is not an option. Um, maybe going forward. That, that might become a feature, but okay. um, yeah, so we're not waiving that fee. Okay, right so, so right now it's just mandatory because on top of getting like that 1.5% and that 1% cash back, it sounds like it's a, it's a feature and a premium that you do pay for, but it combines everything that's on the platform because it, do, it does give you like um, other options. Like um, you get like one extra trading window. What else do you get on top of that? Aside from like the 1% cash back, the 1.5% um, returns and the uh, entire like second trading window. What else do you get? Yeah, so then you also get a 0.25% discount on borrow. So it'll knock it down from 4.25% interest down to 4%. Okay, which is insane, honestly. And when it comes to, I think you guys had a promotion this month, which basically gives you for the entire month of June, if I were to register right now, I can borrow like up to 5,000 bucks and get 
um, no interest charge for this entire month? That is correct. Yeah, but you do have to have that um, minimum equity value. Which is 10000 $10, bucks. And talking about minimum equity balances, because right now, me and my wife, we have um, we both have Acorn. She has like an entire like an entire account like with fifty thousand. I have one with like ninety thousand bucks. But the main thing is this: we already like like bought shares. We buy shares like the shares like religiously every single month, right? My entire thing is this: we bought shares at a specific price, and I want to know this: can we transfer our portfolio from Acorn to you guys? One hundred percent. Yeah. So you. If you're interested, I could um, transfer you over to one of our transfer reps who would be able to give you more of an idea about, about that transfer process. Yeah, but my main, I'm just, I'm just asking some questions right now to see if it's a, if it's a good fit. So maybe after the conversation, we can actually go through that. But yeah. the main, the no, main, no. the main thing I'm worried about is that, for example, when I did talk to, um, I think it was Robinhood, and they told me kind of like the same thing. But the main factor was this: that they asked me, Tommy, you know, we can do that entire transfer thing, but you will have to sell your securities first, and then transfer that money over to us. And the entire thing is this: I don't want to, like, I don't want to sell my securities because right now I'm up like twenty percent, and then if I sell them, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be committing to that gain, and I'm gonna have to pay taxes on Correct. it. So, is it? Do you think it's possible for me to just transfer my securities without having to sell them, or have to sell them and transfer it to you guys? No, so like 90% 90, 90 of the time, the securities will transfer over in kind. Um, well, we just have to make sure by checking the statement, but uh, yeah. most of the time, most of the time, it's, it's a full transfer in kind. Okay. And just to double check some things, do you guys, because, you know, on, on Acorn, all we do have is like basically like five index funds that we do invest, I think it's seven, seven index funds that we do invest into. So can we just go over them, see if you guys do have them in the, in the entire M1 platform? Is that okay with you? Yeah, let me take a look real quick. Awesome. Um, so we have the the Vanguard SP five hundred ETF. Yep. So we do have that. Okay. Then we have the small the small the Vanguard small cap ETF. Um, the ticker symbol is VB. V as in Victor and B as in Boston. Yep. We do have that as well. Awesome. So that's two out of two out of seven. Um, do we have the emerging stocks market ETF by and the stock symbol is on um, VWO. V as in Victor, W as in Win, and O as in Octavia. That is correct. We do. Awesome. That's three out of seven. I'm very surprised. Um, do we have the real estate um, REITs e index um, ETF? Um, is V and Q? V as in Victor, N as in No, and Q as in as in Q. <laughs> yep, that is correct. We do. Yeah, so we have most of the Vanguard. Uh, awesome. So this is, uh, all right. So we, after that, we do have some bonds in international um, um, ETF. So for example, do you guys have like um, the iShare one to three year Treasury bonds? The the um the symbol is um S H Y. Yes, we do. Okay, so let me see here. Do we have the corporate bonds and the stock symbol is um L Q D? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yo! Wow, this is insane. Um, what about the international um development markets um and the stock symbol is um B E A? Yes, we do. Oh my God, so. That means that I can take my entire portfolio and just transfer it over to you guys. And even if, um, for example, because the main thing we do have Acorn is because with Acorn, <clears throat> we invest and then we can have like, um, for example, like um, partial shares. But with you guys, we can get the partial shares. And on top of that, we have the freedom to explore like other investments because you guys have like, um, like individual investments also. Like for example, Apple, Amazon, and all those um other um investments. Oh, for right? sure. For sure, yeah. And then we also have like expert pies too, um, that are like hedge fund followers and so on. Wow. There, there are a lot of options. Wow. And when when I um when I create a portfolio, how does it distribute my money? Does it just like distribute it evenly according to the percentages I set, like Acorn, or are you guys a little bit more more different or something like that? It's a little bit different now. Like we like we talked about earlier with the auto invest feature, if that's off, there will be no trades um, without you making a manual buy order. So okay. you'll be able to, you know, buy specific portions of your portfolio, the full the full portfolio, one slice of your pie. You know, you'll have complete freedom in making your trades. Now, when the auto invest feature is off, mm -hmm. what we will do is we will invest money based on the underweight of targets so like say you have something set to 25 percent and it is performing at you know 20 percent we will invest in that before uh, a security or a slice of pie that is you know overperforming i guess um so we will try to get you back to your target so it's not going to be distributed based on the targets but it would be distributed um based on what is underperforming first and then go to the over okay so for example if i have all those seven um all those seven um index funds in one in one portfolio, are you saying that if I invested five hundred bucks, you guys would invest in the in the in the investments that are underperforming first, and then get to the ones that are um, 
overperforming, I guess. That's correct. And is and and just to just to clarify, just to make sure, because what it sounds to me is this: if it's long term, then I want to make sure I get the I get the stocks that have the discounts on them because I'm doing it for long term. Is that why you guys are doing it like that? That is correct. Yeah. So we're we're just trying to allocate based yeah. on the targets that you that you're setting. <clears throat> okay. And at the end of the day, it will be, for example, if I say 500 bucks and I want 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 in each of them, it will be 10% on that stock, but that one would be like bought first, basically, right? Is that what you're saying? So that the underweight portion is only based if you have auto invest turned on. If you just deposit $500 into your cash balance, yeah. you can you can add value to whichever slice, the full portfolio, whatever you'd like. Okay. You can make individual buy orders. Now, okay. when auto invest is turned on and it's just automatically, you know, redistributing your funds into yeah. your portfolio, it will go to the underweight slices before the overweight slices. Okay. And do you guys um do you guys do automatic auto, automatic rebalancing? Uh, we do. Now it's not automatic. You would have to hit rebalance, but yes, we will do that. Okay. And when things do rebalance, you're you're um theoretically selling off some shares, right? That is correct. So you would have to report that, right? That is correct, yes. And that you guys, is taxable event. But, but I'm assuming you guys do give, like at the end of the year, you guys do give like an entire record of all those things. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so you would get a statement, um, I believe in April or something like that. Okay, awesome. And when it comes to buying and selling um, and selling investments, are there any fees attached to that? Uh, no, it's completely free. Okay, yeah, because the main thing is that I did notice like in your... In your um, in your frequently asked question, you guys do have like I think I think everyone has this mandatory fee. I think it's like less than one penny, but you guys round it up to like the nearest penny. I think it's the, it's called the SRC SRC fees and the TAF fees. Yeah, so there all trades are free. All trades are free, one hundred percent. Okay, so can you break down the um the SRC fees and and the um the TAF fees? How does those, how do those work? Um, let me pull up exactly what you're looking at. Give me one second. Okay, no problem, Danny. So basically, I'm asking him about a fee that's mandatory by everyone that does business, and it's the government. The government does this all the time, and you do have to report and actually take off that fee every single time it's going on. So they're recovering the fee, or they're taking it off your entire like um security whenever you sell a stock. So let's just talk about that really quick. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. Yeah, um, it's called the um the the SRC fees and the TAF fees. It should be in the I think it's in the miscellaneous fees or or right there in the frequently asked question. But I I'm pretty sure it's it's literally less than a penny. But I think it's something that is mandatory, like with the government. Like every time you sell a uh, an investment, you, like you do have to, like you know you have to pay that fee. But it's literally like a fractional of a dollar, like a fraction of a penny really. And I I did see that you guys um do round it up to the to the nearest dollar. I mean, to the nearest cents, penny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not as familiar with that, um, but I would say I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. From my knowledge, th there would be no charges attached, um, no fees at all. Okay. And for example, I did notice that you guys have some limits. So for example, is there any limit to how much of my securities I can sell at any point in time? Um, no, so there's no limit, um, but the, the only limit, I guess, is that you can only have 100 securities within your portfolio. Okay, 100 securities within my portfolio. So, for example, if I have a million dollars worth of, um, of securities in there, and it's like, you know, it's distributed evenly, and I want to sell my entire portfolio at once the next trading day, is that possible? Can I take out all that money instantly? Because I did see something about a $50,000 limit. Yeah, so let me, let me just get the exact number here. Okay, no problem, Danny. I'm very specific about this, guys, because a lot of people say, like, you know, it doesn't matter. It's only $50,000. It's a lot. You're not going to get there. But if you're investing for the long term, 15 years later, you will have over a million dollars in there. So you might have to take it out 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. It doesn't make any sense. You know, let me check with my colleague. Just give me one second, okay? All right, no problem, Danny. That's fine. Okay, so Danny took a break. He's going to be back because he doesn't have the answer to that question. And, the, the guys, these are not normal questions. Like, nobody asks this type of stuff, so I'm not expecting him to know, like, all this stuff. Like, the SRC fees, they're very hidden. Like, all these things are, like, very miscellaneous. So, I'm not expecting him to know everything, but I am expecting him to know, like, at least a good deal of it. He's putting me on hold now. That's fine. He's getting information. That's the thing you should do, like, when you don't have the answer. But if he does, like, cut off the phone, then I'm not going to be very happy with that. Hey, Dan. I'm sorry about that. That's fine. No problem. Yeah, so there's no... There's no uh maximum in terms of a sell order i mean so you could sell that million dollars hypothetically yeah. now the only limit would be um is the withdrawal so we'll 
we would not allow you to withdraw more than fifty thousand um, dollars. However, we would just have to make a manual override, and then we'd have to wire that money out into your bank account. Okay. So, for example, if I do have, because the reason I'm asking you, Danny, is because I know that fifty thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money, like at once to have in an account. But if we're investing, like for example, me and my wife are like investing for long term. By the way, can we have joint mm-hmm. joint joint accounts? Is that possible or no? Yes, we do. Okay, awesome. So if me and her are investing and we're putting in our salary in there, like 15 years on the line, we're going to have like a million bucks in there. So my concern was, am I going to have to take out, like take it out $50,000 at a time? You know, that was my concern. But apparently no, we'd, it isn't. we'd be able to wire it out. It just, on the platform itself, if you submitted a withdrawal for a million okay. dollars, it would give you an error message um, and we would just have to wire it for you. Okay, so awesome. So by the way, Danny, if you guys don't make any money from like the trade-in fees or anything like that, and also, like, basically have, like, a free check-ins account. And the only feature you guys do have is, like, this entire borrow thing. But not every single person is doing that because I'm assuming... Was, by the way, when somebody borrows against their portfolio, are they borrowing to invest or can they borrow that money to do with to, to do whatever they want with it, basically? Can I take the money out and just do whatever I want with it? Yeah, so it would go directly into your cash balance. So that way you can add leverage to your portfolio or you can just withdraw it straight to your bank account. Either one. Wow, wow. So you're telling me I can get a, I can get basically like a personal loan that's secured by my investments at a four point, at a at a four percent if I do the entire M plus and a four point twenty five, if I do the entire like regular stuff. That's correct. Okay, that's awesome. And you said thirty five percent. So if you have ten thousand bucks, that's like thirty five hundred bucks. That's correct. Yes. Okay, that sounds that sounds very lucrative if you ask me. That is the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And one more. Qu- Let me see. I had another question. Oh, do you guys think you guys are going to be releasing a credit card anytime soon? Um. So I, at this point, we don't really have that in the works. Okay. Um, but that might that might be a feature going forward. Okay. Awesome. And I did notice, like, with some credit unions, for example, whenever you sign up for even like a bank account or a check-ins account, they do require to do like a soft check or a hard inquiry. Do you guys do any of those things when you're like um, registering for the checkers accounts or the investment account? Do you guys do any of that? Um, there will not be a hard inquiry now. Would there be any inquiry whatsoever? Um, so yeah, we do. We do. Lo- we do a soft inquiry. Okay, so you guys do do a soft inquiry, which is fair. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. And what happens, for example, I did notice you did say that um, whenever your portfolio reaches like a like a position of maybe like over ten dollars, whatever you set. It automatically can invest it if you do choose to do that. So, for example, my question is this. What happens with the dividends that I do have in the account? Does that dividends automatically get reinvested or does that dividends automatically goes into my my entire cash balance or can I set that feature for myself? So, it goes into your cash balance um, and then at that time, if you have auto invest on it gets, and it reaches $10, then it will go back in your portfolio. Okay, that's um, awesome. Because otherwise, it would just build up in your cash balance. Yeah, and, and also, whenever I have, like, for example... If I'm if I'm trying to like you know if I'm trying to wait to like buy some investments like when I hit five thousand bucks and I'm saving that money basically in my entire cash balance like step by step do I accumulate any interest from that money being an entire M1 finance um investment platform like right there just waiting until I make some investments does that money make any interest? So no, not at this point. But now when when spend does launch, you'd be able to uh, basically transfer money within your checking account into your investment account um, and then possibly earn interest on it just right now at this point in time you would not be earning interest on your cash balance okay and can you break down what what is spend gonna be and am I gonna have to pay for it uh, no so you, you won't have to pay for it um, but it will basically be a checking account in which you will have a debit card um, you can move money from your cash balance in your investment account into your checking account um, it's very uh, it's very liquid I guess you okay. make multiple transfers. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and, and it did look like, for example, if I'm trying to, um, for example, if I, I have Chase right now, if I want to send money from my Chase account to your, um, to my investment account over there, is it going to take like one to three days to actually get there? So typically what happens with the deposit, um, the funds are available right away in, in your M1 account. So you'd be able to like, so if you, Initiate a deposit maybe at 8 a.m. Yeah. Um, it should show up in your cash balance right away. And then yeah. you'll be able to trade on that. It would not reflect in your Chase account usually for one business day. Okay. Awesome. So it's kind of like instantly also. Correct. And then I'm, I'm able to make um to make investments with that money even before it clears basically. That is correct. Yes. So it's kind of like, like working based on good faith. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. That sounds very fair. 
And, and Danny, can you, I can't I can't really hear you. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Sorry, awesome. can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now perfectly. And when okay. it comes to um, I noticed that you guys have like ETFs, regular stocks. You guys don't have mutual funds though, and that's fine. No stock options either. That's fine. Um, but do you guys have retirement accounts? Can I do my Roth IRA, um, my um, traditional IRA here? Yep, we have both uh, traditional and Roths. Okay, awesome. And I did notice, um, is there a liquidation fee when it comes to the entire thing? Um, no. So there, there's a transfer out fee. Um, yeah. So if you were going to transfer from M1 to another brokerage, um, there's a $100 fee. Uh, okay. But not, not to liquidate now. Okay. And for example, if um, when it comes to my investments too, like for example, my like, like if we do decide to go with you guys and we transfer from Acorn to you guys, that's fine. But if we want to transfer then from you guys back to Acorn because of any reason, are you guys going to charge me that same $100 fee to do that? Um, yes, we would. Okay. So it's kind of like a flat fee across the board. Whenever you're transferring anything, it just works like that. Correct. Okay. That's, that's okay. I, I guess I understand. Um, when it comes okay. to the entire, um, the debit, the debit account, change accounts, how does it work with the ATMs? Like how can I deposit money inside of my account or do I need a, a second account, like bank to basically transfer money from that bank to your bank? Or can I use any other ATM to deposit money to you guys? Yeah, so you'll have, um, let me see, just so I have it straight, so you'll be able to connect um, an external bank account into your okay. M1 account yeah. um, and have and have money mobility that way too. So you'll be okay. able to make transfers from one bank account into your investment account, into your spend into your spend checkings account too. Okay. Um, all that will be available. Uh, it's, it's not on the platform yet, so we're still like working to get this out to our customers, but um, at the end of July, early August, that, that'll become a feature. Okay. But what about, um, for example, right now, how do I get money inside of my account? Yeah, so you would connect your bank account, um, and then you just have to initiate a deposit. We will never um, pull money from that account. Everything will come from your cash balance. So if you, were, if you submitted a buy order today um, for Amazon for $100, if you didn't have $100 in yeah. your cash balance, that trade would not go through. Okay. So you would have to have that money in your cash balance, and then we can... Um, fulfill orders okay and for example so there's no way there's there's no way for me to deposit with an atm it has to be with an external account uh, at this time yes okay awesome and when it comes but well, i can withdraw from an atm right mm -hmm. that's correct and uh, our atm withdrawals free yes they are but um my question is this because free is kind of like um misunderstood sometimes is it free for me to do it as, you, as, you, as in you guys won't charge me a fee, but do you guys also cover the fee that that owner of the ATM might charge me? Yeah, so you would have, for M1, like normal customers, they would have one um, one transaction covered. If you have the M1 Plus, you'd have four ATM fee covered. Is that, covered. Is that four a month or four a total? Four a month. Four a month. And, for example, what are the free ATMs? Because I, I, I I'm assuming that you, if you guys don't have like deposits, you guys probably don't have an, a network of ATMs you guys work with, or do you guys, or, or do you guys have a, a network of ATMs you guys work with? Um, at this time, uh, I, I don't have the exact information just because it has not dropped yet. Okay, okay, I understand. So basically, what it sounds like to me right now is that the best way to actually use the platform is by having an external account to send that money automatically to you guys, or just have direct deposit set up, right? You guys do have direct deposit, right? Um, so the direct deposit feature will be available once spend is available, okay. uh, which will be around August. Okay. So right now we're just working with um, external accounts and stuff like that, basically. Right now it's an external bank account that you would connect to your M1 account. Okay. And, oh, well, you guys, okay. And can I use um, Zelle, um, Venmo, and all that stuff with my with my M1 um, checkings account? Um, so at this time, um, we, don't, we don't support that. So you would have to actually... Uh, using um, a bank account okay. to connect. Okay, that's fine. And for example, when it comes to, are there any late fees attached to the entire, um, any fees whatsoever attached to that, to that check-ins account? Um, let me get the exact. Sounds like a unfinished product if you ask me. Like very unfinished. And you just like rush to get it out there and they don't have all the features in. But if by August they do change some things up, it might be a good feature. But up until now, it's just giving me a headache just thinking about like like having to have an external bank account to even work with them. Can't even make direct deposits. Can't use an ATM. Can't do anything. It just sounds like I can't do a lot of things. But when it comes to the entire investment portfolio, it's pretty good. All right. You know, let me just check real quick with my, one of my colleagues. Can I put you on hold for a quick moment? No problem, Danny. Thank you. One second.
Okay, he's second again with his colleague, which is fine. I appreciate when someone doesn't know the answer and they go somewhere else to get it because they want to make sure you get the right answer. But until up to right now, guys, I'm not a big fan of the entire like um spend account or debit account, like whatever you want to call it. It's very unfinished, like not polished at all. It lacks, it, la it lacks a lot of things, to be honest, if you're asking me. But if they do release like a, a network of ATMs that you're working with, maybe in August or something like that, it might be good. And I'm going to say a few things after this video because right now, I have a lot of things to say, but I want to make sure you guys get the whole picture first. Again, guys, they do close at 5 p.m. So I called a little later just to make sure if I got really close to the end time, would they continue with the customer service, which is to get the right thing to do? No problem. No problem, Danny. Yeah. Yeah, so we're still working out a complete list of all the fees for the, the checking account, but um, at this time, we do know that it's going to be a $30 overdraft fee. Um, there aren't going to be any foreign transaction fees, and okay. there's no minimum balance. Okay, okay, that sounds that, that sounds pretty um pretty normal. And for example, Danny, when it comes to entirely like, borrow feature, um, you did say that I have to keep in like you know I, I'm I'm borrowing against thirty five percent of my portfolio. So for example, if I have ten thousand dollars in my portfolio and I borrow like um thirty five hundred bucks, the maximum, um, do I have to keep thirty at least thirty five percent of my portfolio inside there? Or is it possible for me to actually liquidate it at any moment in time? Yes, yeah, so you would have to keep that amount um, basically as collateral. Okay, perfect. And when it comes to that entire thing, if I borrowed the money today and I want to pay back next week, are there any like um, penalties for paying back early? Oh, no, not at all. Um, so you'll, you'll always have the option to pay back the principal. Okay, awesome. And if, for example, if... If a person's account goes into a delinquent effect and they're not paying back and you're and they're not contacting you, effectively you guys do have the right to sell off their investments to liquidate that debt, right? That is correct. Yes. Okay, that sounds pretty fair. Danny, thank you so much. You've answered literally all my questions. Really appreciate that, and really appreciate you yeah, taking the time to contact your buddies also to make sure you give me the right answer. No problem. Yeah, feel free to give us a call back if you have any other questions. Um, going forward all right all right awesome danny have a good day so the first thing is this customer service is stellar i like it i like it i like it and so far guys let me know in the comments down below what do you guys think so far do you like it or do you not like it and comment down below before i tell you my opinion because i want to make sure you guys have your own opinion first and then i break things down and then i want to see how things change so comment down below now that you guys commented here's what i like and what i don't like and you guys saw me smiling like a little kid when he was telling me the about the entire investment account. But when it comes to everything else, it just sounds kind of weird and unfinished. And especially the entire debit account, checking accounts, like whatever you want to call it, it makes no sense for me. The benefits for the entire M1 Plus account, they're not really real benefits. I don't like them that much. And to be honest, there's a lot of other competitors out there that do a better job. Second thing I want to talk about is this, guys. I get the entire thing of you guys comparing yourself to the big banks, but that's not your competition. I just want to make this clear. Your competition is not Chase. Your competition is not Wells Fargo. Those are trillion dollar companies, right? Those are billion dollar companies or whatever you want to call it. They're, they have a lot of money basically, okay? So your competition is really Vero, SoFi, Chim, and all these other companies like Acorn and all these other places like Moneyline. But your competition is not them. So when you compare yourself to an obsolete place that does business in a very old-fashioned way, of course you're going to win. But when you compare yourself to SoFi that offers 2.25% or Vero that offers direct deposit, free ATMs, and also offers 2.80% if you direct deposit, then you don't really look that attractive. But when it comes to the entire investment port, by the way, guys, let me, let me clarify this, right? The debit account... It looks unfinished. It sounds unfinished. It doesn't really make any sense. No ATMs, a whole bunch of fees attached to it. The APY, you have to pay to get it and you have to pay over $100. And I did some math. I think in order to make $100 from a 1.25% APY, you have to have over $10,000 invested a year in that account physically without moving it. And since, and since it is a check-ins account, most than often, you will be moving that account. That's why banks do an entire APY with the savings accounts because they know that you can only transfer it six times. That's it, six times. And then if you keep doing it, it becomes a check-ins account. And on top of that, I can't deposit any money. It just sounds super weird and it's unfinished right now. But if you guys do step it up next August, something like that, then I will be on board. But the entire the entire thing of comparing yourself to big banks doesn't work. Compared to Vero, and SoFi, which is your real competition, you're not that good. You're not that perfect on that side. Compare on this side to Moneyline and Acorn to the investment side, 
you guys are really good, okay? You guys are really, really good, and I got happy and giddy like a little kid. On top of that, customer service was great, stellar. I waited online for maybe like 30 seconds. It wasn't even like a voice recorder or anything like that. I went straight to that real person, which I really appreciate. But here's the deal, guys. When it comes to the entire investment portion, I didn't like it a lot because one, is automation. Two, you have access to everything out there. So on top of that, I can transfer my entire portfolio without having to share, without, without having to sell my shares or without having to confirm any profits. So effectively, I can take my entire $4,000 account at Acorn, transfer it over to this account here, and then boom, I'm good to go. I didn't have to sell anything and I can just do it automatically the same exact way. But on top of doing that, I can actually have access to any other thing that I actually want to have access to, like other stocks, individual stocks, whatever I want to do. But you're probably asking me, Tommy, are you going to switch to this entire M1 thing, right? But I don't want to talk about that until I clarify this one feature, the borrow feature. Tommy, what do you think about the borrow feature? Now, it's very lucrative, okay? It's very lucrative. But the only thing is this, guys. You have to have money in order to have to get a big loan, basically. So, for example, if you only have a thousand bucks, you can only borrow three hundred fifty dollars at a four percent rate. Not that bad. It's pretty good, especially since a credit card charges you thirty percent, and a regular loan, personal loan, charges you well, ten percent, maybe eight percent. But the reason that these people don't charge you that much money is, go ahead. It's because it's backed up by your investments, and they do have the right to sell off your investments if you can't pay it back. And on the top of that, they have everything, control over everything. So they can effectively just take your money if they wanted to, if you're not paying, okay? So effectively, I think this. If you have $10,000 and you won $3,500 at a good rate and you want to invest that, very good deal. But just know what you're investing in because if you can't pay back, they will take your money back. So just take that into concern. And before I tell you guys my final thoughts, I do want to say this. I've been talking on Twitter with someone that uses both the M1 Finance, SoFi, and every single product out there. And they think exactly what I think, basically. And it's that, you know, the product is good, but it's not that great compared to its competitors. And I want to talk about a few other things, guys. For example, when it comes to entire customer reviews out there, I want to say this. I see some people saying, Tommy, you know, I got an unexpected charge for $100 whenever I transfer my account out. That's standard and it is on their website. So you should have done the research and you should have checked it. Second thing is this, the learning curve of how to do everything. So people out there don't know how to work the entire automation feature, don't know how to slice their pies, how to make pies within pies. It sounds very complicated, but it's very easy if you watch the tutorial. So there is a learning curve to this product, but they do a very good job, or at least they try to do a good job at making sure you understand everything. And if you don't understand it, you can just call customer service and they will help you out. So there's that. Now, the third thing is this. I did see some reviews about a lady that she said, Tommy, there's a lot of bugs in it. On top of that, customer service sucks. The bugs feature, I get it. Maybe new software, it has bugs, that's normal. But in reality, customer service is stellar, from my experience. When you call in, you're on the line within 30 seconds. On top of that, they'll work out everything for you. And they have an entire team to help you organize everything. So in reality, if you have any problems whatsoever, just call customer service and they will solve it for you. They seem very cooperative by the entire call that you saw here on this video. The fourth thing is this. A guy told me, Tommy, you know, I used to be a daily trader. I can't get used to the entire thing when you only have one trading window a day. Meaning that you have to premeditate your entire investment. So for example, if I want to buy... Amazon tomorrow, I have to set it up today. So by tomorrow at 9 a.m., they can actually take the account into effective and actually make the trade happen. So I can't just be like, okay, I'm gonna make three trades today, four trades today. This makes people unable to do like day trading, which is very good when it comes to um, long-term investments because people do get like very crazy and just wanna be like, I wanna sell everything. I wanna buy this, I wanna do this, I wanna, you know, having this feature kind of locks people in just a little bit, which I don't appreciate because you should give people freedom. But in reality, I do see why they have that feature in there. The fifth thing is this, Tommy, I'm losing money every time I'm making a trade or buying something because every time I buy something for a price, by the time they actually execute the trade, it's too late. And this happens to me all the time on Acorn. Acorn is the same way, but sometimes Acorn takes one day, even two days to actually execute the trade. And what I've learned is this, if I'm doing things effectively for the long term, it doesn't matter if I'm getting a 2% discount or a 3% discount. Most of the time I can time it correctly because I know exactly how the market is gonna react to certain things that's going on. So I just make the trade like one day prior and I always execute on time. But in reality, if you're trying to make the entire thing, when you're trying to buy investments to make sure you actually get the best deal on it, this is not the place for you, okay? It's not the place for you at all because in reality, it's long term and they're very limited when it comes to trades and it's very limited, you can't just like, like make a trade real time if you can on E-Trade and all those trading platforms. So there's that. So keep that into effect. Now, the cons. Tommy, what are the cons? What didn't you like about this? And I already mentioned this, but effectively, this is my number one con. You can't make a product 
charge a premium and then have no way to waive it and compare yourself to a company that has a way to waive it. For example, I had Chase, well not had, I still have Chase for the past six years or four years I think and I've never paid a single monthly fee. Why? Because one, I have money coming in, two, I used to be a student and three, there's a whole bunch of other ways to actually evade that monthly fee. And that's something that I really appreciate. So when you're comparing yourself to Chase and saying, you know, Chase charges you $144, $12 every single month. I get that. But Chase gives you the options to waive it. But with you guys, there's no options to waive it. And I don't appreciate that. So for example, if you're going to make this entire option, you can't compare yourself to Chase. You have to compare yourself to SoFi and Vero because Vero offers 2.25%. Marcus by Goldman Sachs offered 2.25%. And also, what is it? SoFi offers the same thing. You can't compare yourself to Chase, okay? And top of that, 1% on cash back, very basic, very normal. I understand that. No big deal there. But it's just the APY. And having to pay for that APY that is not the best on the market, it kind of makes me just a little angry. Why? Because I'm paying money to get a feature that is usually free with everybody else, but I have to pay you to get it. I have to pay you to get a four ATMs a, a, a month. When SoFi gives me access to all the ATMs in the planet, for free doesn't make any sense on top of that why do i have to pay you to make more money off my savings accounts when you guys profit by me having a higher balance on my account okay so so far guys let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this entire product before i tell you my final thoughts okay if you commented already good because here comes my final thoughts so the main thing is this guys when you're making a product like this that is compounded out of various products like a debit card spend an account um, investment account, borrow account, all these things contradict each other, okay? They all contradict each other. If you're trying to make something that's for long-term investments, you shouldn't have an option to have that person trade against that entire or borrow against that entire investment because that's not really smart because the average person doesn't really know what they're doing. And on top of that, if you have a spend account, you don't really want people to have a very high APY there because you want to make sure they're actually spending the money on the investments rather than the savings account. So you want to make it as attractive as possible, but not too attractive to the point where people are going to keep their money there. And that's very weird. Okay. So what I mean by this is this, okay. If they offer 2.25%, more people will be saving their money rather than investing their money. If they offer 2.25%, which they don't, that's what they are thinking. But in reality, this is what I think. If you give people the option to actually be competitive and you're as competitive as everybody else, I think that people will really appreciate that. So for example, this is what I would do, by the way. This is my advice. This is my constructive criticism. Make the account 2.25% flat. Be competitive with the rates that are out there. Don't compare yourself to Vera. Don't compare yourself to Chase or one of those companies because you're not on that level yet. And then you guys will do a great job there. Don't make this M1 plus. Don't make people pay $100 for this, okay? It doesn't make any sense. People are doing this for free now with Barrel and SoFi. That's your competition. They're doing it for free. But if you want to have people pay $100, just make sure the value outweighs the entire thing. Because 0.25% on a loan doesn't really make a big difference to me, okay? So make it actually make sense for people to actually pay that money. And on top of that, make it so, for example, if a person has $10,000 in their account, and, and and has like an investment account and all the products will say like, oh, we waive the fee if you do that, okay? That way people actually wanna have everything and that that's fine, but don't make it mandatory and make it seem as if, oh my gosh, it's so attractive when it's not. So in conclusion, guys, Tommy, what do you think about the product then? Do you like it? Do you recommend it? Do you not recommend it? And it's complicated because it's complicated, okay? And you guys probably already know what I'm gonna say here, but I recommend you always go with the best deal out there. And right now, this is not the best deal for certain products. So for example, if you wanna invest with a company that treats you well and that doesn't have any monthly fees, any maintenance fees, or any managing fees whatsoever, I recommend them for the, for the investment portion because they have a whole bunch of options out there and a very smart way to actually carry on the business. So I'm 100% behind that. The entire borrow feature, I like it, okay? If you know what you're doing and you borrow against your portfolio, which is dangerous, well, you can actually make a lot of money off if you're investing your money smartly. Third thing is this, the spend account. I don't like it. It doesn't make any sense. It's not that competitive. It's not competitive at all. When you compare it to big banks, yes, but when you compare it to your competition, Vero SoFi, it doesn't make any sense. And I've talked to several people on the internet and they're all saying the same thing. So if you guys fix that one feature, which is like the entire debit card feature, you guys will be perfect. A second feature I do recommend you actually fix is customer service. Make customer service 24 seven. You guys have three groups of people, investments, borrow, and also spend. That's three different types of 
people that you have to train differently. Okay, so make it 24 seven so people have access to actually talk to people whenever they want to talk to people. On top of that, make the debit card actually make sense. Don't make me have to have an external account just to connect to you. Make me be able to actually connect my Vero, send, friends, send money to my friends, tell my money about the entire account because that's how you actually get more traffic to your company. So in its totality, guys, my recommendation is this. I recommend the investment portion but I don't recommend the spend portion. If you want to do borrowing, you can do that, but at your own risk. Now you probably ask me, Tommy, are you going to transfer all your investment from Acorn to um, M1? And the answer is no, I'm not doing that at all. And it's because not my loyalty. I don't care about loyalty. I care about value. I pay $1 a month for Acorn. And so far I haven't had to pay that money at all because my dividends covers it every single month and plus more, of course. But the reason I'm not going over to M1 is because I have everything I need here. On top of that, I'm not a stock picker. I don't pick Amazon, I don't pick Google, I don't pick individual stocks because I'm not that type of investor anymore because I don't do the research every single day. I rather just invest with the market and have my money grow at a steady pace. What I mean is this, guys. If you're not investing in your brain, in your intellect every single day, at least 500 pages every single day, or reading the entire background to the entire company and you know how to read all the financial statements to a company in the 10K forms, the cash accounts, the balance sheets, everything when it comes to the account, you can't invest in individual stocks. And that's the honest truth. If you don't know how to calculate intrinsic value, if you don't know how to calculate any of these things, PE ratios, then you shouldn't be investing in individual stocks. So yes, it does give you the option to do that, but I don't recommend you do that unless you know what you're doing. On top of that, if I were doing that, I wouldn't really go with M1 because I can't execute my trades immediately. But I would go with M1 if, for example, they made it able for me to actually buy shares almost immediately because it's very important when you're buying individual shares that you're actually investing at the right time, at the right moment, at the right price. But when it comes to index funds, it doesn't really matter at what price you buy because you're doing it long term. Eventually, the market will average out and eventually you will get the same entire return. The same return. It doesn't really matter. Like there's books on this. There's research on this. So just pay attention to that. Okay. And guys, as always, let me know in the comments down below. Do you like the entire M1 investment platform? Let me know what's your favorite part about it. Let me know if you're going to get it. Let me know if you already have it. And personally, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. But it's just those features that I'm not a big fan of. Customer service, great. Investment, great. Borrow, great. Spend debit account doesn't make any sense. Premiums don't make any sense. Fees don't make any sense. Okay, that's what I don't like. Everything else seems great. So I'm recommending that portion, but not anything else. So I recommend you stay away from that. And guys, as always, comment down below and let me know what you think. On top of that, if you like the video, go ahead and like the video and comment down below why you liked it. If you dislike it, dislike it. And let me know in the comments down below why you dislike it so I can stop making content that you don't like. On top of that, I do make videos every single day. So make sure you subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a video and you're the first one to actually watch the video. If you want to talk to me one on one, uno a uno, just DM me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And I'll see you guys next time on the next video. Thanks for watching and Peace. You've got to start at the bottom.